Hello, this is Haku of the Bean, and today we're going to go over some common objects that you may find in the back rooms. Because I noticed that a lot of levels will mention these objects, and some will probably not mention them at all, such as almond water or liquid pain. To try and better understand these objects, I plan on reading in through a few of the more common ones that you may find in the back rooms. First of all, we have the number one most common object in the back rooms, known as almond water. <sighs> Description. Almond water is a substance found in a lot of levels across the back rooms. It is a critical source of hydration and slight nutritional value. It is a sweet almond from or vanilla flavored water that can be found in bottles of several types, typically without a brand or label on them. Almond water can be found in clear water bottles, metal water bottles, glass wine bottles, and even cartons. It can be traded for, traded with, and can be even used to repel enemies and cure some ailments. Some levels even use it as a form of currency. <sighs> Identification. The back rooms can house numerous liquids. Many of them are not safe to drink or even touch. Almond water has a distinct, albeit faint, smell of the vanilla and rose water. It has a subtle taste of sweet, watery almond butter. It does, if it does not exhibit these qualities and isn't clearly fresh water, avoid it. Usage Almond water has been shown to treat ailments, including neutralizing the effects of hostile entities. It can help maintain one's health. An example of the usage of on water as helping those of the disease it can also will be used to maintain one's focus, especially when facing entities. Wonder if I should read this right now or another time. It's an entity called a disease. Now this is just the Why did they do that? I think I'm just gonna not read this right now. We're busy with almond water. <sighs> Locations. Almond water sources can be found on many levels of the back rooms and in many ways. The most common containers of almond water are in water coolers, water fountains, bay machines, and rarely balls of it, which can be found scattered throughout level 4. Almond water can also be found on fried in level 32, dripping from the ceiling on level 5, and inside shacks in level 364, flowing from streams in level 30, dispensed from sinks in level 5, buried in level 19 soil, being packaged into bottles in level 5005, 5, and hanging as mist in some areas of level 60, 1863. Armed water can notably be found in level 34, but with heavy waste be being inside the tunnel. Beyond water from that level is dangerous to drink unless it's fully sanitized, even if it's already been boiled. There are a few different types. Expired almond water. Expired almond water is, well, almond water that has already expired. Looks just like almond water, except it has a green, blue, or white mold flooding inside the bottle. It smells like rotten milk with a hint of cheese. Whew. 
<sighs> like all water, it has certain properties. Unlike its original counterpart, it is rotten and has some negative qualities. These include, but may, but may not be limited to, fluid conditions, weakness in muscles, bones, and cartilage, abdominal aortic aneurysm, loss of memory, insomnia, and general internal bleeding. Cause of death that have also report, been reported due to other symptoms. Reports and theories. Most reports of on water have been verified as true, but there are a few unconfirmed reports. There is a chance that a stream of almond water runs throughout the back rooms, evidenced by its sheer frequency. Fluid in the pipes of level 3 and level 2, and moist caught with it in level 0, but this is unconfirmed. I've heard it somewhere that at level 0, the, the reason why the car is moist is not actually from almond water, but from human spinal fluid. Since you don't really find anything like on water on level zero, we'll be lucky to survive that level. A person has claimed to have seen one of the entities puke out on water. It is currently being debated as it was actually the entity's stomach acid or if the on water was poison to the entity. It is debating if a skin seller's blood might be almond water, as it is clear, much like the product itself. Wouldn't it be easy to tell if you ran into... Oh, right. Anyway. A sweet type of almond water with a certain type of food coloring being on level 6.1 has been called almond juice by certain people. It has somewhat strange effects, making those who drink it loose and giggly for a short time. But it is otherwise safe to consume. Almond cheese can be found on, on levels where almond water is really common. List of known flavors are as follows. Original, mint and licorice, coconut, rose blossom, stronger taste of rose water, sakura breeze, cherry blossom infused, chocolate bliss, mandarin and lime, french pear, honeycomb, lingon berry, melon and mint, Ginger tea and banana and nirvana. So, almond water is a common thing that you will want to actually see when you're in the back rooms. <sighs> actually, I think I'm just gonna. Do this. It has the more common ones right here. Now we're going to look at neon water. <sighs> Neon water is a rare liquid found in special levels of the back rooms. Neon water is an incredibly rare colored variation of almond water. This sustenance can be found in a variety of different flavors, with light carbonation ranging from enjoyable to rather er, undesirable. The flavor profile will oftentimes be accompanied by the color that it is commonly associated with. Generally, any explorer outside of level 3999 will not have a chance of ever finding neon water. Neon water can be found from several sources, including Cafe's A, A Studios Outpost in level 3999, the infirmary located in the Promised Land, certain areas on level negative 150, on rare occasions from the river in, one, in level 1009, perhaps from almond water and crushed up crystals of the underground. 
Neon Water has the ability to cure any ailment or wound inflicted on an explorer. Considering its level of guardian power, it is advised that it shouldn't be consumed in a careless fashion. Different, more rare colors seem to hold additional uh, enhancing abilities, such as increased mentality, sense of alertness, reaction time, and more. Some have theorized that Neon Water restricts one from being detected by some common entities. The level 1009 event. In incredibly rare circumstances, a person with good moral ethics approaching the waterfall of level 1009 trigger an event that replaces the almond water with different varieties of neon water. Although anything removed by a person with bad moral ethics will either turn the waterfall back into almond water or will dispense it in a more exceedingly corrupt version of almond water. If a person were to drink bad liquid, they would likely exhibit uh, the same symptoms of, as liquid pain. <sighs> the following are less known, relatively less important facts about neon water. Just some trivia. Leslie E. to Ubernadate. The Empress are of the Graces, the second most powerful man in the Major Explorer group, received neon water from the waterfall in his home when he was a child. Yeah, that was pretty yeah, unimportant. Speaking of liquid pain, I think that's gonna be next. <sighs> Liquid pain, otherwise known as Object 12, they're trying to do the SCP thing, they are not doing very well. Because there's a whole lot of different categories. It's a lot more organized, sure, but it's not the same. And honestly, Backrooms is not SCP. It's very different and should always remain in its own thing. Liquid pain is a highly toxic, corrosive, and acid substance found in later levels of the backrooms. It is seemingly placed inconspicuously throughout the backrooms as if it had an objective to deceive wanderers into tasting or consuming the substance. Doing such can be lethal. Most of those who accidentally mistake liquid pain for harmless drink are generally in disoriented states or very dehydrated. Liquid pain may be prepared by incorporating an almond water with skin cellar blood. Doesn't that kind of disprove any I, any theory that says that skin cellar's blood would be almond water? Huh. Anyway. This can be carried out by adding a few drops of skin cellar blood into a container of almond water. The almond water will begin to bubble and violently foam red. No, violently turn red. I can't read. Sorry. The approximate moment the solution turns into something into the liquid pain is unknown and inconsistent. So it is advised to treat this solution at as liquid pain the moment the ingredients interact. The color and consistency of liquid pain are drastically different from that of almond water. Liquid pain is a dark, deep crimson with the a consistency of gelatin. It should be noted that liquid pain will boil and explode if it is to come into contact with alcohol. Symptoms and effects. After consumption of liquid pain, the first symptom will be either a mild fever or mild swelling on both legs. Effects of liquid pain are treatable until it reaches the fifth stage. Drinking almond water is known to have a sizable chance of curing the effects of liquid pain. If successful, all damage 
designed to one's body like a liquid pain will gradually heal. It is unsell it, it if it is unable to treat what itself before the a fifth symptom occurs, the last three symptoms will be forcefully underground without any way of preventing such. Second symptom. The second symptom of drinking liquid pain is a sharp, it's a fierce, sharp, stabbing pain in the stomach. This will only cure once. It is commonly attributed to the corrosive of an acidic liquid burning holes in the stomach and intestines. The pain has been described as being comparable to getting stabbed by a scorching hot steak multiple times. Third symptom. The third symptom of drinking liquid pain is a mild to moderate headache that will last approximately 10 hours. The pain is dull but fiercely annoying. After the headache wears off, the fourth symptom will unexpectedly commence. And the fourth stage of drinking liquid pain in, in will, will have... One's limbs and head leak a small amount of pus. There is no discernible all source of this pus. It never leaks from any other part of the body. This is the last chance for treatment to be administered. If not treated, the symptoms will continue. The fifth symptom of drinking liquid pain will be fractures that occur in the skull, which apparently abruptly which appear abruptly. The victim does not feel any pain during this process. Sixth symptom. The sixth symptom of drinking liquid pain is internal bleeding from the legs. The muscles start to break down, creating lacerations, along with the bones in the afflicted its feet. It's snapping erratically. This proceeds to cause a great deal of pain, yet it's never fatal. Seventh Symptom. The seventh and final symptom of consuming liquid pain is the explosion of one's un stomach and eyeballs. The victim's organs bust open and leak their contents inside of the body. This is not fatal, although those with such a, such a fate may very well wish it would be. The pain is utterly excruciating and has been found to have caused seizures. At the conclusion of the seventh symptom, the victim will become paralyzed, unable to move their limbs. However, they will still be conscious and aware of the pain. Afterward, the uh, bones of each limb detach, bringing the victim from ever using these limbs again. Approximately 12 months later, the victim will succumb to liquid pain's deteriorating effects. Oh my goodness, they have a nutrition and in in facts thing. I'm sorry, we're going to read this. Nutrition facts. Serving size, one cup, which is about 120 milliliters. Amounts per serving. Uh, calories. 5,700. This has 75 degra grams of fat. 25 of saturated fat. 150 grams of trans fat. Dang, it has my fat in it? Okay. Um, polyunsaturated fat, 50 grams. Monounsaturated fat is 10 grams. Cholesterol, 750 milligrams. And don't freaking and drink liquid pain. You're probably going to die. Sodium, 25,000 milligrams. Total carbohydrates, 666 grams. Haha, <laughs> edgy number. Dietary fiber, 100 grams. Total sugars, 350 grams. Includes 349 grams of added sugars. <laughs> Sugar alcohol, 50 grams. Protein, none. Vitamin D, none. Calcium, none. Iron, none. It contains 9,000% of your vitamin A requirements, as well as your as well as 200% of your folate, 1750% of your biotin, 50,000% of your required copper, 30% of your molybdenum, 1250% of your daily 
chloride intake. So, uh, yeah, you should never er, have liquid pain or anything that has those sorts of nutritional effects in any case. And honestly, 50, 50 set, 700 in calories, that's way too much for anyone to be ha having without audit causing any, any problems. Unless you like work out a lot, I guess. Anyway. Liquid pain can be found in places characterized as bottles, mugs, and sink water. It has also been observed in large bodies of water with a few separate levels, such as level pain. The list this provides a category of li levels that contains liquid pain. Liquid pain is in a negligible amount of the rain discovered by the MEG group on the level. 867. Negligible? I mean, it's in the rain. It's gonna hurt your skin. Unless you have an umbrella. I mean, even then, it'll probably burn through it. Liquid pain is in bottle characteristics in level 5, level 4,112, and level 84. Liquid pain from level pain is dispensed into the kitchen sink from level negative 404. Liquid pain was a, was also claimed to have been served in at least one of the canteens of level 5, 557. Oh, this is unconfirmed and somewhat doubted. Level 990 has found to produce large amounts of liquid pain. Level 303's fun stand has been serving people liquid pain disguised in almond water bottles. Liquid pain is dripping on the walls of level 1314. Now we have combinations and variants. Variants. Why did I say that weird? Anyway, a list of understood combinations and variants of liquid pain. All variants and combinations are known for being hazardous, with each having similar or lethal chemical structures. <sighs> Absolute pain. This is a very rare and extremely lethal version of liquid pain that can only be obtained by mixing two thirds of a cup of liquid pain and one third of a cup of jar of dark. Which I think we'll get to, and I'll be it for today. Is NK is capable of instantly killing any lesser entities upon contact. These may include death rats, death moths, death wasps, wall rooms, clumps, and party goers. Galactic pain. Galactic pain is a mix of. 24 tablespoons or one cup of liquid pain, one pint of galactic slushy, and one tablespoon of absolute pain will make galactic pain. It can only be found on, on level 22. Something you know, across this substance on level 22 is a rare occurrence. The total quantity of the substance is two pints and nine tablespoons. Liquid pain. 1,547. Liquid pain in, in 1,547 is an exceptionally lethal variant of liquid pain found in abundance within level 1,547. It is highly absorbent through your skin and leads to even symptom deterioration within seconds. It further breaks down organic material into meaty clumps, which are then transformed into horrifying drippers. Other information. Mysterious infirmaries in level 577 have been proven to cure prisoners who have surpassed effect 4. It has not been confirmed if these rumors are true or false. Liquid pain is uh, theorized to be the carpet liquid in level 0 due to observed chemical similarities and effects. I don't think liquid pain is a carpet liquid. 
I mean, at that point, on water makes more sense. And even that doesn't really make sense since people die of dehydration level zero all the time. <sighs> so we've done almond water, neon water, liquid pain. <sighs> Let's see the jars. So I went the jar of dark or jar of dark. Hard to say it fast. Jar of Dark is a very common item within the back rooms. Jar of Dark, also known as black juice, black water, or the last resort, is a very rare drink found within the black rooms that can only be obtained by in either finding it within dark places or by compounding all liquids present within the back rooms. Don't try this, it's very risky and could lead to your demise. One can identify a jar of dark when it comes to its overall design. The jar of dark looks like a regular jar with a metal lock that contains pitch black liquid. The liquid also exudes a certain odor that is very similar to the smell of burning toast, which is the most common adaptation of its smell. Some people claim that it often smells like sewage water, cigarette smoke, and burning wood as well. Properties The current properties of the liquid within the jar of dark is still unidentified at the moment. The effects of the liquid vary towards many things. It can vaporize almond water, neutralize any poison or corrosive substance, and even grant and wanderers the power to cheat death. Effects All entities within the low of the consumers and will be made aware of the drinker's whereabouts and status. All entities within the level will be affected by a, a homicidal rage, including non-hostile entities. The user can experience positive effects when their life is in imminent moral danger, spontaneous regeneration, supernatural survivability, death transfer. The user will experience piercing pain specifically described as a million needles piercing your body all over. The average duration of the effect of the drink can at last to about 10 hours. The longest time ever recorded was 8 days. The shortest, hand, the shortest one on the other hand lasts for 10 minutes. This is information to conclude that the effects depend on the person and themselves. <sighs> we already know how to make absolute pain, and we're about to go to Jar of Right, which is apparently the exact opposite. Hmm. <sighs> Drop right is a very enigmatic item in the, within the back rooms. I'm only including this because I included Jar R Dark and it seemed like it would just fit together, you know? 
Jar Bright, also known as Jar of Light, Sparks in a Jar, or Beam Jar, is very rare. Is a very rare and valuable item within the back rooms. This item could be obtained by either randomly coming across it within very dark levels, or by trying to create it by hand. Would not recommend. Identification. One can identify a jar of right by its eye-catching design. Jar of right looks like a normal jar with white specks slash orbs inside it. These white specks contain a chemical that ministers a comfort in essence that calms the nerves of the user. Jarbrite's components are yet to be broken down and identified. There are varying in effects that Jarbrite exudes. The general effects are a common sensation, decreased me negative mental stress, increased awareness, Increased cell reconstruction. The second of the secondary effects are mediumship, the ability to see ghosts when the consumer is mentally broken or religious. This uh, this is associative identity disorder. I'm not qualified to. say much about this, but the consumer is lacking in sanity, user can manifest up to five altars using Jar of Fright. It's a real thing though. Adrenal fatigue, only when moving too fast. Minor paralysis, side effect of adrenal fatigue, and visible veins. Jar of Right can be used in many different ways. Here are some examples for you to follow. Note, you can only use any of these options once. Upon doing so, the jar will be rendered useless slash broken. 1. Effective Anti-Entity Beam Hmm. <sighs> The user can use the jar as an energy cannon that can kill aggressive entities. One must open the jar and point towards the target, an entity, and wait and simply wait for it to charge up the beam. Alternatively, one can open the jar and begin to shake it in order to supercharge it, with an add risk of the beam firing too early and hitting its user. The supercharged beam will, will burn, paralyze, and weaken its target while also Oosting its user or backwards from where it's aimed. This recoil is significantly amplified when the beam is aimed straight down, allowing for one to jump out of deep areas. Two healing stream. The item can be used to try to drop a healing stream that heals you and other individuals around you. This stream can cure a good amount of entity caused illnesses. It can restore a sanity to its targets, and it can restore hunger and thirst to its targets to activate the stream. Open the jar and say heal. 3. Light Implosion in Grenade, or Big Bang. The item can be used as a grenade that will gather or all light within in the room slash level. Once room slash level will be completely dark, the jar will then break and release a lighting in light that can render wanderers and entities permanently blind throughout the room. In order to arm the grenade, your lights out as light as you can and throw it with all your might. Be sure to cover your eyes. Masking Mist The item can be used to spew an unidentified mist in high quantities. It appears as a pack to human and eyes. And it's very thick, hence most hostile entities cannot see through it. Although the mist can 
dampened sound and smell in the area the mist also lingers for a long time which allows wanderers to get to a safe point without entities being able to follow their trail <sighs> in order to spew this mist out shake the closed dart and open it at facing towards the floor aegis of light The algorithm gives a shoot out rings of energy that block off entities and other hazards, i.e. fire, toxins, water, spikes, etc. in a small area, which can then be picked up and moved. This shield can be broken, but it takes a large amount of strength in order to break it. Comparable to steel, the shield can also be used to slam entities into solid walls, potentially crushing them or dealing massive physical damage. In order to arm the shield, one must say, protect me in a calm voice. And open the jar and shake. The more or the jar shook, the bigger the shield. One way time travel. The iron can be used to travel through the cracks of time within in a one hour time frame and can only be used once. This will shatter the jar instantly. One will end on either the past or the future. One can be made aware of the possibilities and changes in the timeline by looking at shattered pieces of the of the jar. In order to do time travel, say the words take me to followed by a moment and place and time you desire within the one hour time frame. No, do not time travel to the past in order to interact with yourself. You'll create a paradox. You will cease to exist. Alright, I think that's enough for, for today. Thank you for watching. This has been Haku the Bean. With SCP items, almond water, neon water, liquid pain, jaro dark, and jaro bright. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like, subscribe, and a comment down below. And please ask your questions that you may have for me be there as well. See you next time.